hey, this isn't freaking close enough. Pick it up by its tail and just move it. You don't want it in the house, you just move it. I got some miniature and easy to move like a mouse. Just pick it up by its tail and move it. I don't think you're supposed to pick it up by its tail. That sounds terrible. What, it, like you pick up a, a lizard and it, it, uh, its tail falls off and uh, then I uh, condoned it. All Condone right, so sounds like it means don't, but it means with. do. Yeah, Weird. Because con, uh, the cone means with, so it is to do. Are you Latin? Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you're louder than me. I don't mind. I mean, so, so Jewish guilt mother. Scooby. Oh, yeah. You look like a conservationist with your reusable cup, and I look like a dick with my disposable, but you threw out your disposable and put it in a reusable. Correct. I'm not trying to fool anybody. I just like just drinking letting out of the that. public know that we're equal dicks. What you're letting the public know is that you're a little snitch, and <laughs> you're I. You're a little bitch. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, uh, at, when you get it to go, this is what they give you a, a different cup. And I like this cup. I like that cup too. Thank you. I have one at home. I'm also pretty. No, I'm not even being a dick. That was just nuts. <laughs> yeah, I have the voice for stage. You have the voice for everything. It's just loud in my ears right now. <laughs> okay, there we go. How's this? It's good. I'll let you know. I mean, it's loud. <laughs> Well, I could lower your headphones. Is okay. it loud compared to you? Are you loud too? No. Well, <laughs> in my headphones, it's a little screechy. <laughs> it's never screechy. If anything, it's gruff and too much, but it's not a very screechy voice. I'm sorry. Then it's gruff and, and it's too, too much. much. Did you see Tell me. Julio Torres' is special about the shapes? No. Ricky, you're going to be furious. Yeah? Why will I be mad? You'll be mad in a good way. Like it's the way it's like how you feel about Fred Armisen, where you're like, ah, that's like that's because what you do is so interesting and unique and outside the box. So when someone even is like in the Venn diagram of what you're doing, it's like, ah, fucking come on, man. Where I think with other comics, it's sure, like, sure, that probably happens to them every day, yes. where they're like, I have a premise about airports, but you do such a special thing that it's. Um, I don't have any premises about airports. That's why I know what you mean. This is... Uh, is there a way to push, I was going to say, to push that piece up? Yes. Hmm. Good job. So, Jackie, um, if, I don't know if, if you've listened to this podcast before, but... I have. Well, for this joke, you, okay. you, you couldn't have listened to it. We get into the hard-hitting questions that a lot of podcasts don't get into. Now, I apologize. Mm -hmm. But when you were a young girl... You know what I'm going to ask, right? I don't. I apologize, but when you were a young girl? Yeah. I know. Remember what happened? Look into the camera. Tell us what happened to you when you were a young girl. Who is it that big a deal? So I, it was the first acting job I'd ever gotten, and I was super duper excited. It was a Rice Krispies commercial, mm -hmm. and um, it was a big deal. I was sort of like this kid actor that like wore a leather jacket <laughs> to auditions a lot and had like black straight long hair it's lighter now you get it and I was like sort of a tough cool kid and I got this part in this Rice Krispies commercial national my first one age 10 or 11 then I came home from school my dad didn't know that my mom had picked me up so my mom walks in the door and my dad was like I saw Jackie's Rice Krispies commercial but she wasn't in it and then I started to cry so bad. And that was my entry into the acting business. I'm so sorry that happened. Mm -hmm. Is my foot covering your face? No, it's not even in my shot. Oh, your shot. Oh, I'm sorry. Is this your shot, this camera pointing at me? I was just setting up the next segment. Wrong tones with Jackie Tone. <laughs> Relax. Fair. I'm sorry. I didn't realize there was a segment called that. And this time that was my bad. Oh, did you not? It's okay. Oh, God, there he goes. So this is a segment. No, that's no. just what you were saying. No, you know what, Jackie? I'm, I'm, I, I'm coming in hot, and I don't. I, it's not real. Feels real. It's not fake. It's just Feels not. What I know of. To yes, be but it's consistent not, with what I know of you for many years. And I apologize for that. <laughs> but let me, let me, let me, let me kind Thank of. Thank you. Finally. Let me re-explain. Let me explain. It's not where I want to be. Mm. 
It's not where I want to be. You know what I mean? Like, I get that. part of me does because I love to play, but sure. also like, let's stretch. All right. Good. <laughs> Do the full bend and then hold your elbows. Sure. And then put your put your head like oh everything just cracked. Oh Christ. Get this if you want. Oh my God, where'd you get a Theragun? I bought one. You did? I thought Podcast you were saying it got doing gifted. Well. No, I bought it. I got it at a discount. There would be no way to not masturbate with that. Is it too painful? I don't have a clitoris. Oh yeah. Yet. <laughs> Fingers creased. Let me see. Oh my god, this is a fucking, this is a vibrator. No. Get out of here. Well, let's, let's have you in the chair and let's try it out. <laughs> I'm definitely not going to put it on my parts, but, oh my god, oh my yeah, god. Yeah, it's great. Oh my, I, this is an experience. How much, I'm drooling, how much did it cost? Well, it retails for 350 oh. but I know a guy who got it for 290 is that Jamie Sigler, Jamie Lynn Sigler's, like, husband? I feel like he, not created, but something very big to do with this. I don't know anything. I don't even know who that is. Oh, that's how you to press it nine times to shut it? That's no, no, there's three levels. You can turn, oh. you turn off at the bottom. Oh. <laughs> Shout out to Hypervolt for sponsoring Take Your Shoes Off podcast. Maybe. For $290. I guess I, I, I could just put it here, right? Yeah, put it in. What's the problem? I like it. I, yeah, I like it in its place. I like it in its place, especially with the cameras on, and it's like I'm gonna look at it later and while yeah. I'm editing, and it's like that doesn't go there. Could you? Yeah, like you could bring it down and angle it up. Yeah. How's her? Great. Is she nice. Okay. Oh yeah. Jackie, thank you for coming over. For those of you that don't know who Jackie Tone is, Jackie Tone is in. Uh, she's done a couple of, I think one. Uh, two episodes of The Sopranos. One episode of The Sopranos. Felt like two. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> I wish it felt like two. I was supposed to be recurring. I got replaced. Oh, jeez. Mm -hmm. You did not have Way a... Way to bring it up. You did not have uh, a lot of successes with the early acting, with getting kicked out of the rice... Kicked out of. I mean, that's my thing. Getting uh, removed from the Rice Krispie cut. commercials. Cut. Yeah, snap, crackle, cut. It used to. Uh, it's not a good enough no, joke. Mm -mm. I'll keep it in though, so people know I'm not perfect. Uh huh. Yeah. Otherwise, they would have no idea. That was the implication, but I know that's not really true. Mm -hmm. Heck, I don't even get many views or listens on this. Heck, you will. Jackie, thanks for coming over. You were about to tell everybody what I did, and then you just said the Sopranos. <laughs> <laughs> Who gives a shit what you did? It's about what we do. What we will do, who we will affect, who we are in our hearts. Does our soul speak to the masses? Are we helping? Are we, do we have a carbon footprint? Are we making a lasting impression? Do our children think we're cool? Are we childless? <clears throat> that's something that's pretty tough for you, huh? Yeah, it got dark toward the end. That comes out in all my improvs now. It just no matter <laughs> what I do, and then it just ends with like, I want a baby, <laughs> just dead eyes to the camera. Are you still... Um Reserving your eggs? Frozing. Frozing them. Yeah. You have to yes. pay, is it a monthly fee? No, it's an annual. Um, this is how they get you, to quote my Uncle Harvey. Um, they, he uh, had his eggs frozen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, my dad and both of his brothers love the this is how they get you narrative. Um, <laughs> but uh, when I first did the egg freezing... It was 2014. Yes. So I... Um, we should tell everybody how you know that, but that's another... Okay. Sure. Okay. We're, well, I just feel like why aren't people? Well, I guess they could just be like, oh, they're good friends for you a long time. You put it on Instagram. He knows. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think there was Instagram. Jackie and I used to date, and I went with her to get her eggs frozen. Uh, at the time, I just thought she, we were going to get eggs, and uh, then she got changed in some weird gown, and I was yeah. thinking, what are you a messy then eater? It was made of paper. That's yeah. right. Very messy. And then you got your eggs, a couple eggs taken out, and they, um, and now cut to. Five years later, they're still frozen. They're on ice in Encino. And sometimes I have dreams about them. Yeah. Their names are Darby and Michael, and I wake up in cold sweats like, did the generator fail? Like, this is a real... Are there only two eggs? No, there's 15. And, oops, sorry, making loud noises. Um, there we are. Um, I moved today half a millimeter and said, there we are. <laughs> um, they, uh, there are 15. And I've been thinking about doing it again. 
But why? Is I don't 15 know. not enough? I know it is enough, but I think like my need to control and also my need to control combined with this, I don't know how to say this without sounding like a douchebag, but like the plentiful, what feels like a, I'm going to say blessings and I don't even really believe in that word, but like the dumping of what feels like good fortune right now, it, 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 career wise feels like would be the opposite of a good time to have a baby. Um, I don't understand. You're saying I'm saying what that, does that have to do with getting more eggs? That like, oh God, it just makes me panic and go like, I'm getting older. I want to have kids. I want to make sure to secure this. What if for whatever reason those don't go right or right. those don't? Because um, it's a it's a long process. So you have to inseminate the egg, mm -hmm. which who knows if that'll even work. And then if that there goes that egg, and then if it does work, they you don't know if they attach, which is mm. why like people who want one baby sometimes put in more than one at a time, which is why people end up with twins and triplets, because oftentimes you'll put in a few and none of them will attach. And so that's just, it's a, that's a heavy thing. So anyway, it's, oh, it's on my mind, not constantly, but often. And so lately I've been like, oh, I wonder if I should do it again, which is not a reasonable thought. It's like a me trying to control a thing that is, I shouldn't say out of my control because, you know, I could look through a book tomorrow and one of my good friends who's a publicist did that she just got to 37 and she was like i don't know i'm just gonna have a kid and she went and she, she what did, did the book do oh um it was uh eat pray love and it just really inspired her to go to india no she she went to look through like a book of uh donors of sperm donors how do i get in I one of those not, books you get paid by the way if you you could make good money i think I think there's way different ones. Like if you jizz in a cup and you're like, it's anonymous, never call me again. And then you're like, <laughs> and then you're like, never call me again. I think those guys don't make real money. But if you're like, let's say a Harvard grad with a great job who doesn't mind if when the kid is growing up, they contact you to find out who their father, like all those what things. What if I graduated from college, but not Harvard, I'm athletic and I'm, and I'm funny. And I'll let them Did see me every now and then. Did you say hysterical and hilarious and it came out like holster and then you said funny? Because yes. you are hysterical and hilarious. So it would have been okay. Just the way it happened was Thanks. really cute. Okay. Yeah. I um, When I was going to say hysterical, I thought, well, Take it down funny. a notch. Yeah. <laughs> I know I'm funny. I've been hysterical. Mm -hmm. It's like going to a restaurant that as a, as a, as a metaphor. That is like a, you know, the whole menu, just metaphors. Yeah. I'm trying to think of that one you told me. When I was dating that idiot and you were like, and I didn't even know all the terrible shit he was up to, but it was, I, I was like, just kept complaining and freaking out about it. And you were, there was a metaphor you made. You're going to have to cut this out. It's boring. But there was a metaphor you made about pizza. Oh, and it yes. was so fucking apt that I was like mind blown, but not apt enough I know for it. me to remember it. I know it. It's, we're not, no one's, you know, no one's going to be perfect for you. So if we remove that idea, it makes it easier to give us ourselves and other people a chance. But still, we have to remember that even though I can't get the pizza, you know, there's no pizza exactly how I want it. I still want a pizza that starts off a certain way. Like, yeah, it was something like I didn't order the right. It wasn't about ordering the wrong toppings. It was like I didn't want pizza. It was something like yeah. Well, that. then that he's real bad. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, like, he was. like I don't eat cheese and I don't want meat on my pizza. So if there's a pizza that it comes, it comes no cheese, but it has eggplant and garlic, and I'm like, oh, you know, what? let's get that. I'll get rid of the eggplant. I'll add some basil. It's pretty right. much the same thing. Jumads. But I'm not getting. Thank you. Shout out to Instagram at Jumads. Hashtag Jumads. Oh, at Jumads. Yeah, it's got an account. Oh, I didn't got know that. Account. I thought it was just a hashtag. Got apologies. An apologies. So, yeah, but I'm not getting a meat lovers and be like, can we take off the cheese? Can we take right. off all this? And then for you, it was like, I don't even want pizza. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. the wrong. Okay. You know, Jackie, I've been doing podcasts I've done about on this one. I've done about 25 of them so far. That's so cool. Thanks, you. Thanks. Hilarious. Welksnin. <laughs> Welksnin. <laughs> You're Welksnin. I still don't know how to do it. And yeah, I do. think I'm just realizing something. You do know how. Thank you. Welcome. But I mean it. <laughs> <laughs> I know. You know what I mean? But this is it. I mean, right. But I think with other podcasts, and I was talking to uh, Dax a Shepard, Dax about this, where he said, like, uh, we both were agreeing that if someone else was trying to do this thing that you're doing, 
It would it would maybe not be. Wait a minute. It would maybe not be great. Wait, I would like to put a magnifying glass on this now because at first I thought you were just telling me something about Dax, which I want to hear. Oh, but, but now it sounds like a conversation that you had with Dax about me. So why don't we just push in? Sure. What did he say? Did he say I'm cool? <laughs> you know he loves you so much. He's the best. <laughs> he is the fucking best. So what but, he said, but, no one can do what I do, basically. Kind of, because he was like, it is this thing of like sort of dissecting the minutia of the minutia. And it's like, it's so, every moment spirals. Every moment has 30 questions about it. It's not like, oh, a question about that moment. It's like the way that your brain operates. So someone else doing that would maybe make you a little... Like oh, good. It's just, uh, but the way you do it for some reason, and the way your brain operates, it's just like it's it makes it it's funny and interesting. Well, thank you, Jackie, and thank you, Dax. <laughs> but that thing that you're saying that is this thing that is working is the thing that everyone tells me. I don't. This is why I don't like you. So. Which well, one is it? Well, not everybody tells you that's that's the thing. Well, what do you yeah. guys think? Why don't you leave some comments below and um and also and. I want to make sure we don't uh, exclude all the people that comment on all the Jewish shit that everybody's writing. So keep doing those things. Those jokes are really well liked. Get a lot of Jewish comments. Oh, good. No? Even the compliments are anti-Semitic. Oh, my God. <laughs> One guy said, uh, uh, love this podcast. This is the only Jew I could listen to. <laughs> I said, thank you. <laughs> I saw on some of your comments, some guy was like hating on you. And then another guy was like defending you. And you got on board with the guy that was hating you. Yeah. Someone yeah. said, it's so funny. It's like some, he's like Andy Samberg. And someone's like, not at all. And then she wrote back, well, that's, uh, it's, I see it that way. You don't have to. She's like, so you can't say not at all to my opinion. Yeah. And then he goes, he goes, shut up. You know, you don't know what you're talking about. And I said, yeah, shut up. You don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Idiot. What were we talking about right before that? Because I wanted to get back to it. Magnifying glass on minutia. Right after that. Fuck. Uh, people, not everybody. I said, this is what people complain. And you said, not everybody. Oh, thank you. Yeah, Ricky, good job. Thank you. You're smoking less weed these days? That was a good... No. Oh, wow. That was a good recall. Well, anyway, I literally already forgot. Oh, so, but I think that is something with you and me both. And I don't know if it's maybe more you or if it's a good thing probably no disrespect it's more about me it's not a good thing oh then i think it's about 50 50 okay uh, or more me <laughs> it's that um we both have always been we will you be i just love good jokes oh, the best we both have always been polarizing like when i was a little kid and i was trying to get acting jobs here and there i would go into an audition and on one audition i would do the exact same thing and i would go in and just be like you know, big and fun and doing whatever I thought was funny and cool that I should do. And sometimes it was like, people would say, like I met, for example, this guy, Danny Jacobson, who created Mad About You. And when I was 19, I went in for a general meeting with him. My agent knew someone that worked with him and my agent said, why don't you meet my other client? So we sat down and he wouldn't let, he, he didn't let me leave in a good way. I was there with my mom and my agent and he like, on the spot, signed me to a development deal. He was like, I'm going to make you a star, kid. And it was like the greatest thing that ever happened to me. Why did it take 30 years? That was only when I was 19, you dick. But um, Oh, 20 years. Yes. Well, the, the flip side of that is when I was running around New York and going on auditions, my agent was getting feedback like, hey, just so you know, she's a lot. Mm -hmm. And my agent's like, yeah, I know. I mean, that's what she's doing. She's a teenage comedian. Like, what is she going to go up there and be fucking timid? Like, that takes a lot of ball. My agent would sort of defend me. But also, to her credit and also to sometimes my disservice, you're telling a child that that they're like sort of bad and wrong like a lot and it wasn't just coming from her like i would get feedback in the room like i would be on an audition and doing whatever and they'd be like okay tone it down or they would tell my agent did you she sucks did all you the clock that yes and you thought that no you're wrong or you thought what sometimes a little bit of both sometimes i would like leave an interaction and be like well that was like definitely not how i did you learn from it that? It wasn't until my 20s that I would be really big and then go like, that's not how I... How's it going over there with the drink? That that's not how I wanted to... How I would have wanted to handle myself in that situation. But it wasn't until I got a little older that I could like look back and leave a thing and be like, oh, I don't feel so great. Like in my sternum, I feel like... 
uh, I, I wish I just was more, and we've talked about this, um, like just in my own skin in that moment and just comfortable in my self and funny and cool and chill, but, but like not but, like they used to say on auditions, sucking all the air out of the room. But, but being comfortable in your own skin and being big and silly aren't mutually exclusive. Correct. I think when you're big and silly and authentic and people are on board, it's also, we've talked about, I have to st stop saying we've talked about this because we've I, talked about it all. I understand that feeling, but, but let, let's set up real quick right now because I get that way and I'm getting more comfortable with getting out exposition because people are listening. If we've talked about some of the things that we're going to be talking about, we've talked about before. Right. You could, don't have to say that. We don't have to qualify anymore. Um. Thank you. So As I've told you. <laughs> That was great. Um, my la my own volume stopped my laugh in its tracks. Um, um, Very um, poetic um. if you actually break that down from what we're talking about. Mm. Hearing your own joy made you censor yourself. But also, it was just, just really loud. And, yeah, and it kind of bothered me. Thank you. <laughs> what were we saying right before that? Something about Dax likes me. Uh-huh. It was right after that. Uh, okay. It was about being too much and knowing and being oh, in your I just own skin. Wanted, I want to finish all of that, but I also want to say that's this thing that like I sort of see in you to circle back to what you said a second ago of like, well, how come then everybody says this is this thing about me that they hate? And I think a lot of times the thing about us that makes us really special and makes a lot of people gravitate to that thing and to you and me is also a thing mm -hmm. that quite literally repels other people. And I, and not in a way that's like low key either. Like she sucks all the air out of the room or people are like, you can't leave. I'm getting the, the head of the network. I'm getting the head of Fox down here and we're, so you have to sign these papers. You can't leave. Yeah. So I've accepted that um, when I became aware of that pretty late, which is what, what, what uh, John DeWalt refers to as uh Sorry. It's okay. I was trying not to do that. Is that okay? It's just the hand? Yeah, it's dry. Okay. Uh, a double-edged sword where it, it could cut at either, you know, the pros or the cons. Um, you know, you could you could cut the bad guys, you could cut the good guys. Um, but you, does that not make sense? That's what I added to it. Just you know, I, I, I mean, I know I get it. I, I think... It's not just about our personality. It's just, yeah. just everything in mm -hmm. general. There's like pros and cons to everything. And and this thing that could be so attractive to somebody else could be the exact same reason somebody's like, it's not for me. But I also think it's why a lot of people choose to, um, you know, be really safe in their personality. And I think that's not sometimes a choice and sometimes not. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes that's just who you are and maybe you're shy and quiet. And I think that's, you know, obviously as rad as well. But I think when you have a huge personality and that's just who you are and what you've always been. Um, and you feel like people are like, Ugh, what you're performing all the time. It's like, I'm actually, this is what it looks like when I'm walking my dog and I'm singing mm -hmm. to him. One, two, three, I'm a one, two, three. His name is Glenn. Count it. One, two, three. So things of this nature that I'm doing, um, cut that, uh, that I'm doing. Did you say cut that? No. Yeah, I did. You can never cut it because I'll, the people at home need to know about Glenn. Of course, you must keep it in. Okay, we'll put up a picture here. Oh, he is fucking brown and brown eyes and a gray beard. <laughs> oh, we lost for a game. I don't know how to handle when I don't want to talk about something anymore. Because do I really not want to talk about it? Also, yes, I don't. <laughs> but, yes, I don't, Tony. Also, yes, I don't. It's a good name for a special for you. Thank you. Yes, I don't. But also, I don't want to negate somebody else. Like, you didn't it, want to talk about Glenn anymore? I don't want, like, this idea of, no, more, this stuff we were talking about before, about oh. how Dax thinks I'm so great. Oh, Jesus. No, about, about this stuff, because, like, I have so many thoughts on this. Me too. And I, and have and you I, talked about it a lot on the pod? I, I think, I mm. mean, versions of it. I talk about it a lot too. I mean, not publicly, but it is, it's a big topic for me. But I think both of us, to our credit for who, however we've landed as grownups, have done an enormous amount of work on ourselves. Mm. And I think it's part of why it's such a topic for me because I can look back on so many years of my life and go like, whoa, yeah. I, I didn't see what... Well, I'd like to talk about actually maybe uh, the origins of that for me was while we were dating. Um, the origins of the realization or the origins of the behavior? 
the realizations. Oh, okay, I was like, because you were nuts when you were a kid too. Me too. Okay, well, take it easy. All right, just a little judgment, a quick judge. I have been working these past few years a lot on balancing the 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 difference between where I need to calibrate differently and when I need uh, versus accepting this is what I am and what's the best most efficient and and it's very fluid, but. Um, what I have, where I am at the moment is, this is what I am. I love this thing that mm. I am. I understand that everybody doesn't, mm. and I stop saying everybody doesn't, please. That's just no. Bad. I mean, literally, everybody doesn't like it. Not everybody loves it. Not everybody doesn't. That I would am, mean every single person doesn't like this. I understand. But that's not what I want you to right, say about what yourself. You're saying. That wasn't what was the narrative that was going through my head, okay, but cool. through the language, I know what you're saying okay. now. Uh, not, not everybody likes that. Mm -hmm. So I have, to, right now in my life, it's working on a dance between only allowing those people that are on that frequency to be part of my life when I have the choice versus when I'm in environments to kind of qualify myself. And I had a show last night and... I've started posting my shows on Instagram I recently. Yeah, I, I was wondered if you were just doing more shows or you're just posting about them. I just started them. posting oh, about yeah. them. And people are coming out and it's, it's nice. Yeah. You know, four people to a show. But it's like people are coming to see me. And, right. But with that comes the, the thing that I don't like, which is, am I hosting your evening now? You want to uh, come? You say hi before, after. You're messaging me about the tickets. and the, It's just, I don't. Mm -hmm. So last night I had a show at uh, the Improv. And afterwards, a, a few people were there. And I had seen them, you know, at a couple of shows this week. And it, they're very nice. And Fans? I have, random in the group of five, I have two of their numbers. And some okay. of them I've never met. Okay. Um, and I, you know, I don't, I don't go to lunch with any of them. Okay. And I'm high. <laughs> sure, sure. Okay. Sure. And I said to them, I'm going to. They're asking me like, but oh, but did you do this? And how's this? And it's so nice to see. And mm -hmm. and I said, I, I am gonna be. All I have is surface. All I have are jokes. And if you want that, I'm gonna kill. But if not, that's you got to know. This is what you're in for. For what, the rest of the night or for the show or for what? The when, show's when? over. Okay. We're just outside. So I don't know. Am I, are they talking to me for two minutes? Are they going to stick around for the evening as I'm like, you know, just waiting to, you know, am I going to do another spot? What am I doing? I don't know what I'm doing, but I don't want to have to, I don't want to have to be like, yeah, oh, so you guys are roommates with, uh -huh. I can't do uh -huh. that. I can't do that. It's interesting because you're a, you're a rare breed, I think, of because how your brain operates of, um, like really setting your boundaries, but in a way that can be disarming to people who don't know you, where like someone else would like play along. Like um, a big thing that you do, and I don't know if you do this anymore, is like if I go, oh, kiss your mother for me. You'd say like, I don't, I don't like to do that because if I forget, then I've told you <laughs> that, I'll, that I'm gonna kiss my mother for you and then I don't do it. And then later I'll remember I didn't do it and then that'll, that'll make me uncomfortable. So maybe don't ask me to give someone a high five or say hi to someone or kiss my mother for you. Which reminds me, my mom said to say hi and I did tell her maybe, but that reminded me. <laughs> <laughs> hi, Deb. So, um, but it's a similar thing like that where um, I think being on the spectrum, if I had to get, I don't know enough about it, but it feels like a behavior of, of, of being on the spectrum of like, uh, oh, here's my, like socially, I don't know that it's, it's certainly outside the norm when someone says, hey, say hi to your mother for me. You go, all right. And if you tell her, you tell her. If you don't, you don't. But for you, it's like a very real thing. It's hard to police that because it, when is it okay to lie? When is it okay? And then that's just more to calculate. But for me, right, but th that's what makes your brain fascinating to me is that it, it's not hard for me. Or or when is it hard to lie or more to calculate? You just say that to me. And socially, I've de I've been doing these cues for so long yeah. that I just go, all right. And then if I tell the person I see that you said hi, I tell them. And if I don't, I fucking don't. That's, you know, the big one for me that was tough is when people say, how you doing? Or how was your weekend? Because then I have to like tell them what I ate oh, and all yeah, these things. Yeah, right. So I I, re I just put up on my, my store, I have a site now, and I put up on my store a shirt, that and the shirt says, I'm fine, how are you? <laughs> I'm gonna, so you could get that for... I'm going to wear that. Like 30 bucks, I make $2 on it. I got to figure this shit out. <laughs> March site to the world. It's Everything's so expensive. But so to, to circle back on the end of that show, 
you said to these people what your needs were in that moment, which was like, hey, guys, I, I, I'm not going to find and out also where your sister's an understanding, from in Oklahoma. Also an understanding of what the typical person's needs are as well that right. I might not be able to satisfy. So let me tell you this right now. Right. Because when someone says, are you always on? I want to tell them, before they even ask that question, I want to say, I don't know. I'm not always on. I am now, and it's going to be. <laughs> <laughs> right, and, if, and also you came to my show, and I don't care where your sister's from. Yeah, and no disrespect. I know. So, God no bless. disrespect to you, but like, do, do you want to know what you want to know about my brother? I mean, you know, I always want to know about your brother. To the guy, to of the, to the course. You know what I mean? He's doing great. Shout out to the the Greyhound Highland Park. Hey, and he's opening his third restaurant now Jesus in Glendale. Christ. Yeah, he's doing great. The old restaurant tour, mm -hmm. Matt Glass, but that's yeah. crazy. Uh, so. Yeah, I'm starting, I'm right now starting to feel good. About? The chemicals in my body are oh. good. The combination of whatever we're talking about, me now calming down, the coffee. Interestingly enough, I guess, to speak to the like work you're doing and recognizing yourself, seeing yourself, having self-awareness, um, when you were saying at the beginning, like you felt a little bit like on oh, and um, all of that, I I didn't feel that. I wasn't like, oh Jesus, I came to do. Your I would pod. love to talk Could about you this take with you. Down now. a fucking notch, please. Here's something that I want to talk not about. Not how I felt, and Thank you. and and I will say that that is something I do feel with you. Have you felt that in the past couple of years? Nope, not at all. But I'm just sitting, not at all. But I'm saying that was something I would feel with you all the time. Where I'm feeling very emotional right now. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm For real, I'm crying I, right I now. See. I love you. It was something that I would feel with you. Like you were just being fun, but I was also like a woman in my 30s in a relationship with this person that was like kicking their shoe off into a light in American apparel because he felt like it. I just took that video down two days ago. <laughs> I saw it on my old YouTube channel, and I like, I don't need that up. I don't need that up. Um, but we will put it here. You know, it's, it's interesting that you say that, because I know a lot of times if she's out of town, uh, um, I, uh, I go to John's place, and we just talk about girls, and just really bond with each other. Yeah, because I mean, if your girl's on a job, you gotta hang out with the guys. It's gonna be a guy's the best part. The best part about girls is, um, is uh, John, could you get off me? The best part about girls is how, how you connect with them. So yeah, that's right. Um, and so part of me was like, oh, I love this. I love that this person has this childlike wonder and this excitement for life and this lust for life and this sort of disregard for other people and not hurting other people and not putting anybody in danger. Certainly making a couple, though. certainly making a couple people uncomfortable here and there. Yeah. And nobody wants to be in a store and have a fucking shower slide fall an inch from their face. But, you know, that's sort of what it was sometimes. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting to hear you now when you're not being big. Go like, oh, I feel, let me check in. I feel like I might be being too big for this situation it's, it's, when I'm, I don't see that. It's been very tough for me because I don't know when it is. I mean, I'm, I'm overly emotional, and I know it's not just a topic. It's, it's, it's with you and the history we have and just the connection I have with you. But I, got, I, I found out that I'm, I'm you know, years ago, I found out that this, how I'm received, right? So then I get this diagnosis and it's great. It's like, oh my gosh, all these patterns now that mm. we're unrelated become connected and, and now it's fun and I'm making jokes about like, you know, oh, I could, I could say that now and you know what, all the whatever. And after a couple of months, that novelty wore off and then it got to a place where I just, the blinders were, you know, at least open a little more and I'm literally seeing reaction shots for the first time, basically. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like my life was a movie where the camera's here and all the sound around me was, you're the best, <laughs> you know? And now I'm looking around and I still hear you're the best, but I see the person going, not. Right. And it's like, oh, I don't know. So I'm like, I, I'm learning to navigate a war. I'm under the sea now, you know? Do you feel you're under the sea? When, when I, I, when it when I first find out, I'm just in an, an environment that I have. Mm -hmm. I, I have a new sense of awareness mm -hmm. that is great, sure. but I don't know how to. You know, my instincts are don't. I, I don't have the the experience to deal with certain things yep. that now that I see them. 
So then I got into a pretty big depression for like a year of me starting to see all the things that I'm doing that. And then micro, I mean, uh, Mike, I don't want to interrupt you. Sorry. It's okay. Do you want to add something? I was just going to say, and I imagine when that fucking tarp is lifted off the thing, you're then micromanaging every single thing you're doing in your head, wondering if it's one of the things you did that maybe repelled somebody. But uh, uh, but it, does it bother them? Does it annoy them? Do they like it? Do they not? Below all those layers is the root layer, which is how, my intention versus its the receipt. And is there a disconnect? Because once you know that, then like there's a different if. if it's the, the idea of when you're arguing with somebody to to at least be able to understand the other person's perspective. You don't have to necessarily agree with them. I can't force people to agree with my choices, but I do want them to understand them. And that's a difficult thing to... Oh, yeah. That's, that's just difficult, right? Especially when the, the behavior, which not that it's that big a deal, or I, I'm saying this as my own behavior as well, isn't something they like. But so also, it's like, I don't want to fucking understand you. I don't want to be part of whatever this is, and I don't really need to understand you. I don't but know that's what that's close-minded, they... and that's USA 2019. Yeah, but this was 2017. So <laughs> things, times were different. <laughs> but I, I, so for a year, can I tell, still tell this story? Yeah, duh. For a year, I'm now looking, like, I say calculate things. A lot of times I really do look at them as formulas. And there's a few formulas out there and the variables are different, but you just need some information to plug into things. And if I ask you, can I, can I tell the story? It's going to take a couple more minutes. And you say, yes, that's not enough information for me because now I want to know, are you saying yes, because you know, that's what I want to be doing. Are you saying yes? Cause you want to, why are you saying yes? Are you being nice? So then, so now, so now for, I'm asking questions of people to try to better understand, oh, I don't know how you receive me. I'm, a, I'm aware. Of, I've said this on a podcast before, but this is like a religion for me almost. But answers are kind of easier to find than questions. You don't know what you don't know until you don't know it. So I'm, I'm seeking all these questions now and all these things. So I'm, now I'm literally asking. People, I found that most, a lot of people don't know how they feel consciously. Oh. So how am I going to know? For sure. So even if I ask. Then, exactly. So then when you ask, sometimes it might feel like, a, well, I don't, I don't know. And that's but a then, microcosm right. of this whole how you doing thing. First of all, whatever I tell you and you tell me isn't real. Uh, the intention behind the question isn't real. So do I lie to you and pretend that the question makes sense? Right. I'm, I'm already, I, now I'm feeling myself too much. But... Basically, for a year, I'm depressed and I'm trying to figure out, oh, I see why this bothers people. Oh, I see why this is this or blah, 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 blah. And then it got to a point where it's like, I'm not making any choices anymore. And it's just, I'm not, I don't feel funny. And by funny, I don't just mean on stage getting laughs. I mean, my life is mm -hmm. funny. My, I'm only around funny people. I want to laugh. That's, that's the chemical makeup of the body. Same with me. I know. So... Then I got to a point, and like issues I'm having with peers and friends, and nothing big, but just like, oh, how do I keep my side of the street clean? Literally, how I want to make sure, and I'm and I'm starting to appreciate other people's perspectives in a way that I'm glad that I've learned to do. But it was I was it was too much. It was it's like when you watch a movie and any good written movie, you see the bad guy and like you understand why they are the way they are. Mm -hmm. and it's like, oh, that's beautiful, but he's still an evil person. Mm -hmm. I understand it. I don't agree with it. You know, right. so I'm now like acquiescing in a way where I'm just, this This isn't sustainable. Mm -hmm. And then I got to a point where I started to remember, oh, and this is a little corny, but in a, I guess in a self-help way, but oh, I'm, I'm awesome. Like, no, mm -hmm. like I'm hilarious. So which one is it? So then there was a while where it's like, I, I, I don't... I, Your I, brain loves to compartmentalize and put things in boxes and have there be a black and a white. And I think tying back into the like, everybody thinks this. And I know you know it's not everybody, but even saying things like that. And I think it's why getting a diagnosis was so powerful for you, for anyone, of course, when you're fucking don't know what's going on. And then someone's like, all these unrelated things are related. I mean, but that is like next level feels good for you because you have such a need same to understand and to put in lists and put in sections and um fuck i was just gonna say something in regards to well, was it was about Dax, how much dax thinks I'm yeah cool. it was about how dax thinks you're dope um what was the last thing you said god i keep getting distracted you, there's so many things i want to say you were talking you, you were you were triggered from 
the idea of me compartmentalizing everything. And then when am I, you know, when is this good and when is it oh, not good? Oh, so you were saying like, so is this is this good or is this bad, basically? And I would that was just tying into my brain of like, I don't know if your brain operates this way, but is there's a way to see the gray or if that's where you're sort of getting... I mean, that, ah. that was step two. Um, and I'm currently in step three now, which I don't think is the final step by any means. But it was, oh, I'm not good. Wait a minute, I am, but I'm confused because it goes back and forth. And now I'm at a point that feels really great and I don't know... I don't need to qualify everything. So it feels really great. And here's where it is, which is I think I've, at least where I am now, I've accepted, I know who I am. I like this. And th I also know that everybody is their own version of, of the, the that, right? And not everybody likes this. What's this? Themselves. Like, which is also really powerful oh. of like, that's, I think, the biggest thing of what you're, yeah. to me, the biggest, the biggest, most giant ray of sunlight shining on the whole thing is that you are going through all this and working through all of it. And then at the end going, or even in the middle going like, oh, this is who I am. And I like this. It's like, I think something I, I'm kind of there, but a place I want to make sure I either stay in or focus more on or live more in of this like, okay, that's cool that this is how everybody, I'm working on myself, I'm trying, when I'm a good person. There? When am I not in the I like this? Oh God. <laughs> um, here, here and there, I, it's, I don't think it's that rare. I don't, I'm not like a self hatey person, but I also have like value issues and worth stuff and feel mm. like if I'm not working and funny and fucking young and thin and pretty and all these things, like my value is so wrapped up in what I'm, in my output as opposed to just like sitting and meditating or sitting with a friend like my value is wrapped up in because I've I have felt like I am what I have to offer since I was a kid because I was a kid actor so offer since, to whom anyone a, a man in a relationship a friendship um an, a casting director, a producer, a job that is on the table. But like, in a way, you kind of are. But then separate my career, and I still feel that way in my life. Well, do you, what, do you, what do you think you have to offer? I think that my identity is wrapped up in like being funny and smart right. and interesting. And I remember when I had... Um, um, a friend who I'm still friendly with, but not as close anymore. But I remember one time she just said it to me. She was like, you are not your abilities. And right. I was like, it, it, honestly, this was in my 30s. I was like, what? What? I, 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 it's, I still have trouble. I, I hear the words and I know that it's true. Separate the art and the artist. Although that's generally a phrase that's used in like, you know, you can love someone's art, but that doesn't necessarily make them fabulous person that's different but anyway just the i, I like woody allen uh, i do too movies me too actually i can't stand his movies really but as a as a father <laughs> i emulate him yeah i love his fucking movie. oh god i haven't seen one in a long time because it upsets me but i whatever so that exactly that's when separate the art that you know Love the art, not the artist. But I mean, as if we are we are not Woody Allen. We, of this course, we're, of course, we are Woody Allen. Obviously, um, yes. And when my friend pointed that out to me, it was like a gut punch, and I just was crying. It was like a faucet and a gut punch because I was yeah. like, it had never occurred to me, and no one had ever said that to me. It was just like, well, what am I if not a singing, guitar playing, yeah. joke telling jester? Like, I have a controversial hot take on that. I'm ready. I am. I believe. In part, yeah. yeah. The issue isn't that you know you your abilities define you, because in a way, depending on who's receiving it in what context, that is part of it. Right. You know, my value is I'm a funny, smart, interesting, blah blah blah. Those are all. Here's where the self acceptance thing comes in. Those are all important things sure. to acknowledge. The issue isn't you wanting to. The issue isn't you being those things, and that's what people like about you. It is the manipulation and forcing it and controlling those things where people like me because I'm funny, so now I have to be funny. Right. That's and correct. Here's the deal. You're hysterical. You're smart. 
you're interesting. At the moment, you're thin and you're beautiful and you're young, okay? <laughs> That's just what it is. You can't not be that. So people are going to like that. And that's cool that people... I love that people like me because I'm funny. I love it. Mm -hmm. The problem is if I need to make somebody think I'm funny. If right. they don't know I'm funny. I have on my, my door a couple of notes. One of them is, B, don't try. Mm -hmm. Whenever I catch myself... That's what it was at the beginning. And I don't know if it was right, right or wrong, but I did check in with my intention. When I'm trying to do something, and I'm you, you're supposed to try, you always try stuff. But I'm saying in the context of of um, controlling how people feel about mm -hmm. you, it's not possible, it's not sustainable, and you're gonna it's it's lying. You're gonna get lost in right. it. Right. Just be a funny person, mm -hmm. and when you're not funny, be a not funny person. Listen, <laughs> you're doing great. Okay. Well, well anyway. Drink this over here so I don't get it. It, you, you do your thing. You, you'll it's a little spill on your lap or. Yeah, I think I might get a, an end table for um, whomever is going to be there. That's an understatement. You really must. I do want to tie into what I was saying before about what we were talking about when we when we were dating. Of I, I have I, one of my double edged swords is I treat everybody the same, whether uh, if there's a higher or lower status level, whether I'm whether they're family or whether it's a stranger. It's, it's not even a moral decision. It's just kind of like, oh, this is how you interact. And when I, um, when I became aware of that at first was with you, we were at, it uh, doesn't matter where we were, but it was... But tell the people. It was, at, uh, it, was, it was by the Arby's somewhere on Sunset at a bar I'd never been to before, mm -hmm. but it was in Hollywood. Sure. And we went and I, it was your group of friends. And I... Uh, I did a, a, this this gag that I do that it, it, it usually gets a good laugh, which is uh, I go, hey, man, how you doing? And then they shake my hand. And then after they shake my hand, I put my hand behind my head like as if too slow, sure, sure, sure. which gives a too slow joke. But also it, they know it's a joke because I already shook the hand. So they clearly so, weren't too slow. Yeah. If mm -hmm. any if they don't know that I was making a joke, then then I'm the one who did something wrong as opposed to I'm burning them. So it's just it's a win win. Everyone loves it. It will always work. So I did this joke, and who knows if it worked. But, you know, that was the one, I'm sure, of a, a few at least. And we're having a great time, and I'm being funny. And then we got in the car, and you were you let me know that, that you were upset because of I, I represented you in a way that you didn't like. And let me, before I even go on the story, in case there's any confusion, I understand I, I, you, you were 100% correct for communicating that to me there's no issue of oh why didn't jackie like this that's not the what i'm bringing up but it was like but this is who i am and you know who i am and this is what i've always been this is no surprise so are you control or you want to control the way I, blah, blah 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 and i came i remember that conversation happening a lot where it was like i would bring something up and it was like i feel like your love is conditional because i'm being my true self i felt this so way. right so if yes. i if so you would say if i can't be my true self and you don't and this is a behavior of mine that is certainly recurring and one that you can't really deal with then it feels like you're like your love goes like here and then it's not here and here and then it's not and, here. And it was it was more complicated than that because <clears throat> sometimes it was this is what it was what you literally when you first became attracted to me when you when you saw me perform and you sent me a message and then we first started dating and that was all these were all the things that were validated to me. I hit on them. And then and then they're not and I, I literally yeah, that's I, confusing. I, I, I don't know like when is it hot then when is the stove hot? I I I don't know when. So Plus, I, I, this is before more. I was even less aware in those moments, and I didn't know how, I didn't and have the tools for it. Go ahead. I just think that um, for me, also, like that, that wouldn't be like if someone said that to me, I wouldn't be like, "Well, you like it one minute and not the next." I would sort of understand that, um, and, and I'm not saying faulting you for not understanding. I'm saying it's something you've learned a little bit like later, more recently. Yeah, I just that, did. I literally didn't understand right, what that meant. That it's like. Yeah, of course, it's not hot and cold. It's like, yes, it is totally funny in one scenario and not in another to hop on what you're saying about you acting the same in front of everybody, where it's like you wouldn't go meet, I don't know, you'd have to use an example of a president, you know, we respected, but you wouldn't go, let's say, meet Obama and act that I would. way. Sure. 
Um, I wouldn't love that if I was your girlfriend and we went to go meet President Obama and there were antics. And, that's- and, and to be funny and cool with him, oh, fuck yeah. But that next level antic that you can bring to the table, I don't know that we would need that in yes. the Oval Office. However, what if it worked? <laughs> <It's> <laughs> then, then I'd be like, oh, my man. No, I hear what you're saying. But that I was still- what was confusing to me because I remember feeling... The reason you're not liking this is because of the reaction of this person. Interesting. Which makes sense. Interesting. Which makes though. sense. Yeah. But if this if 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 you if you if I added a laugh track to this scene, you would then have changed your mind and liked it. Which makes sense because well, I like when Ricky makes my friends laugh. I don't like when Ricky makes my friends uncomfortable. I mean the logic does make right. sense. But in the time, I felt like, oh, Jackie's opinion of me is controlled by how other people receive me. And I didn't understand why and what I came up with. And I've said this on a podcast before, and it's kind of a it's it's a tool of of how I live my life now, which is I'm I'm a gambler. And I mean this with with in Vegas with money. I mean this with bits. I love to gamble. Even if I lose a hand in blackjack, I'm having a good ass mm-hmm. time. You know what I mean? It doesn't affect me. Effect it affects most people. So and I don't mean the people that you're doing the bit to who are then maybe uncomfortable or whatever or not uncomfortable went right over their head. What but happens I think to them? for a lot of people, like for myself, I am affected if I do something right. and and it and it crashes and burns. I, I am uncomfortable and I wish I didn't say it and I feel the need to I'm codependent and I want to apologize and send a quick email like, Hey, I said <laughs> the thing about the Jew and the mom and then I fucking that was bad. that was I'm sorry. Like that there's there's times I see people and they're acting a little weird and I have to like go through my ro- my mental, I was going to say Rolodex, not quite right. But have like, I done this? You're saying gone, about yourself? Uh, yeah, and gone like, what did I, did I say? <laughs> yeah. What did I, there's a good chance. Oh, okay, maybe it is. And then ask them and they're like, oh my God, I didn't even see you. And I'm like, okay, fair. Glad I brought that back up. Oh my God, I didn't see you. Whatever. Like, oh, you're I, saying you thought yeah, that like, they're I'll acting see, weird mm-hmm. as a response to yes. what you did. Yes. Yeah. Good to check in. I like the ass though. I do that too. But then I will. I I, do, I can't not because I have to. I have to make it clean. I have to make it okay. I have to go like, hey, did I do this also, thing? Also, that's and how sometimes you learn. They go. How you? Res- that's how you learn how to navigate right. social interactions. And too. Sometimes they go like, yeah, I didn't love that, and I'm like, oh my god, there was a girl on Glow. Call HR. She had a gnarly camel toe in her tiny, teeny, tiny baby shorts. That's when you could see the pussy through the pants. One hundred percent pussy lips, and I don't know. I I walked by her and my brain told me to tap it. <laughs> yeah, well, her pussy's there. <laughs> and I walked, and I think a couple years ago. Are you guys friends? Which, but yes, good friends. And it's like, it's funny because in our HR meetings before the beginning of each season, and we're talking about sexual harassment and um, what's okay and what's okay behavior in the workplace, and if any of these things happen to any of you, what you need to do. And Was who there you ever need a segment call. about if they if you see a pussy, you're not supposed to touch it? Do they yeah, even tell you, you that? Yeah, if you see a pussy, don't touch. They said that. If you see pussy, don't say pussy. They <laughs> said no. They don't say if you see a pussy, don't touch it. So in fairness, thank you, Rinkla, on my team forever. So. But it's funny because in these total sidebar, but in these HR meetings, they're telling us like what things to look for generally done by men of power in the workplace. And I'm going like, <laughs> somebody's going to call. Like I, I've uh-huh, done sure. hot tits out right there hot, and just doing some quick jiggles. I don't know. Yeah. And I feel That's why like, women have it easy in this But business. I think we're all girlfriends and girls will walk by me and smack me on the buns. And we're 14 really close girlfriends who are changing in front of each other and know mm-hmm. each other's fucking secrets and love each other. And we're in, on pylons and it's sounding like sort of sassy naked pillow party and it's not quite that but we are really comfortable and free with each other and I think that's a beautiful part of the job the other side of that is like these are people's bodies and maybe they're not comfortable with what you're comfortable with I would think it's funny Mm -hmm. if a woman walked by me and I was wearing a real titty shirt to like try and motorboat me I would think that's funny and silly in the moment on glow we're all half naked we're working 15 hours a day shit is intense we're fucking wrestling lightening the mood it's fine so this girl walks by and I just gave her a quick puss tap mm-hmm. and instantly, QPT. of course, QPT. And then she walks by and I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> and what's fucked up is I wasn't even like, was that fucked up? I was like, oh, I, I had to. So I rewinded and I was like, hey. And she came back over and I was like, I am so sorry. <laughs> was that like, and she goes, yeah, that was a lot even for you. And I went, Okay, um, like what can I do to? Fi- I'm so sorry. I do you just, want to touch my, I, my pussy? 
bzz, bzz, unbutton, crying. I'm like, I'm so sorry. Like, I don't even know what to do. And she was like, it's, it's no, it's not that big a fucking deal. She was like, I didn't love it, but I also was like, okay, it's fine. It's jet, like, it's not a big deal. Right. And I was like, but can we just quickly, just to circle back, it's so outlined. And she was like, no, I know it's so outlined. And I was like, in all your other costumes, have I ever tapped your puss? No, I haven't. But hey, here we are today. You're in a short short with a major camel toe. It felt like it needed to tap. I apologize. I like how you asked her because you noticed. She said it was a little much, but it's okay. It's done. And then you said, okay, but I need you to understand more. <laughs> I've never done it before, right? Okay. We're in the clear. And then the next I'll day- I'll never do it again, right? And you told me the story. I remember the next day you gave her a $25 gift certificate to Starbucks <laughs> with an apology for touching her pussy, That's which was very classy. That's of right. And I wrote 25 on the on the cardboard, but it was really for 15 and she was kerfuffled. But, uh, they don't know. They you don't add know. it to your thing. Sure. sure. Do you need a napkin? No, but it's a good thing it was over the tray that time. It really did a leak this job. This is why we do trays. It was a leak job. How are your hands? Are your hands row? wet? Good. I'm going to do a quick lick. One. No napkin? No, we don't need to pause and get up and the whole thing with the sound. Okay. You know, yeah, you jump cut. We, true. Were we... Um, I remember where we are. Okay, I do too, but I wanted to... I, I like that conversation because I think it's... Well, there, I have a... My, there's, a there's like a thesis that's like... To a couple of sentences, really one, but I might use a couple sure. that, that I could maybe get out first sure. about the gambling thing. Oh, great. Which and, is, and you also, I wanted to make sure, don't forget to circle back as the gambling connected to when you were saying you act the same around everybody. Yes. Great. It's all, it's per, uh, this is perfectly paved. Great. Okay. Perfectly paved with a little pussy in between story. So though I like to gamble. Perfectly paved with a little pussy in between. I heard it, but I was thinking someone was at the door. I'm going to make a t-shirt. It says perfectly paved with, with a little, little pussy, pussy in between. between. <laughs> uh, oh, I love it. will be $30. I'll make I'm like Three. $3 on it. <laughs> you know what? This one, I'm going to do for $32 and I'm going to donate five. $2 to a pussy charity. I thought you were going to charge 32 and make five. No, I was going to give wow, $2 to a pussy a charity. Man. What's a good pussy charity? Maybe I'll just take five. Yeah. You know what? Here's a pussy charity. This guy. <laughs> All right. I'm charging 32 for this shirt. <laughs> So what it is is, though I like to gamble, I could do that with my money. I can't gamble with other people's money. Great and that's what, with you, I'm going in with your social group, and I can't, I, I, yeah. That's Isn't that great, great? That's a great way to put it. It's so, so concise. So, so sometimes when I'm in a situation and my instincts, I, I, I just, you know, I, I kind of, I don't like to censor myself. Maybe I should, maybe I shouldn't. I don't like it. Mm -hmm. But I do, I am trying to build this, this check in with myself tool yeah. more and more. And when something's about to happen in an energy where I could feel maybe, you know, I usually when I do, but I know it's going to work. Sure. Who knows if it's going to work? I know it's going to work. <laughs> Does it work? I don't know, but I know it's going to work. You, does that make sense? I never has something made. <laughs> if there's ever a moment where, yeah, this is going to work, maybe. If there's ever like a 99% sure, sure, I will, I will then be like, whose money is this? You know what I mean? So good. It's so good. And then, and also it offers because it's like, oh, fuck, what a wasted. There was, could have been something great here. Mm -hmm. There's still the world where afterwards, hey, I was going to do this uh, bit. Mm -hmm. And then it could be, I'm glad you didn't, or you should have. And then on the should have, I say, may I? Ready? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got no problem. I'll, have, I'll jump right in. Have a seat. Yeah. Watch um, this. But I think that with, there's an interesting thing in relationships um, where, schnarf it, where, like you love a person and you so value their authenticity and want them to be, of course, everybody wants, that was something that came up w with you, which was like, which was troubling for me because I would want to bring up something or how I felt about something or how I felt about something you did or something, whatever. While we were dating. Right. And the, the response would be like, this is hard for me because I'm being like true to myself. So basically like by not, doing these things you're asking me to be inauthentic and though i don't quite agree with the argument i do enough that it, that it made it challenging that it made me go like well fuck i don't i don't want you to be inauthentic i certainly don't want someone to tell me that they don't like how big i am because look i, I am also yeah. so i don't want someone to look at me and go like hey you know what it's a lot well fuck you if you can't take it then i have, an, I have enough other friends yeah, it's kind of like you know how you want your pizza but also you have to trust the chef and balancing that out a little bit. And I'm sorry if I didn't give you a safe place to communicate how oh. you felt. I I don't think you knew how. And I also don't think I was a great communicator. And I don't think I said, and, and my shrink says, ask more questions, make less statements. Questions are, it's instead all of, about questions. Instead man. of going like, well, why you're doing this thing. It's like, you know, 
That's about what I was talking about. When you get down to the root of it, it's all if if you could get the in, if if you, we could be on the same page of my intention, whether you think it's funny or not, annoying or not, you like it or you don't. If you understand the intention, it's kind of why how a, a Jewish comedian can make a Jewish joke or black right. comedian a black joke. It's not that it's okay or it's not okay for it's just that oh I know which by the way falsely I could be a Jew hating Jew, right. but you assume oh it's okay I'm I Jewish. trust their yep. intention. So if you could, so that's what it comes down to, and that's what that's why questions are so great. I when I fell in love with maybe I fell in love with Dax before this, but. While we were dating, uh, I would go to Dax and Kristen's house a bit with you. And when I like when I started, like, oh, I love these people so much. There was I, one I moment where when it happened, and then that's been happening before and after. But that's when I, oh, I love these people. It was the way they communicate with each other. Forget it. And we're in the kitchen, and uh, we're sitting down. Dax is sitting next to me because you know we were just boys and we're kicking it. Yeah, we're you guys best just friends. being guys, yeah. being guys, doing guys stuff. Sitting Kristen in the said kitchen, something talking, about both on stools, just being like, oh fuck, bitches and stuff like that. That's cool. You and yeah. Dax. Yeah. He's the best. I know. <laughs> but Kristen said something about his hat, made fun of him. And Dax didn't understand why she did that. Did you say that because, I don't remember exactly what it was, but it was, did you say that because you don't like the way it looks or were you making a joke about the brand of the hat or blah, 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 whatever it was? Because if you were saying this, that would kind of, that like hurts my feelings a little bit. And she said, oh, I'm so glad that you said that to me. No, this is what I meant. I could understand if you thought I meant this. That must have made you feel, you know, and and me <sighs> repeating this, it could sound it's a bit clinical, but it was very organic and the way it should be. And also, clinical is not a bad necessarily a bad thing. Sure. When you're sitting there and going like, okay, because what I if you're reporting your experience and saying, well, what I how here's how I heard that, and they go, oh my god, that's not what I meant at all. I would never intentionally try and hurt. Yeah. Your feelings, I, I wouldn't... It stops any any resentment, any negative... Not only does it stop the... Either he says something passive-aggressive back or now his feelings are hurt or now the seeds planted self, uh, subconsciously where in uh, two months something else comes up. Not only does it stop that, it also, the opposite, it's so connected oh. and loving and we're on the same team. And that's what it's about, being on the same team. So I don't remember the point of that. Um. Oh, yeah. No. Well, you were saying like, sorry if I didn't give you... Yeah, a space, but it may have, being authentic and just communicating and yeah, I think it was maybe just a sidebar. And I was just saying that we didn't, facts. neither of us was in a place at that time to yeah. have like, yeah, didn't just you know, I didn't have the tool, I didn't have the understanding of self Same. enough to even, you know, I didn't know I needed to put a picture up on the wall. I definitely don't have a hammer, you know. And I and instead of me going like, hey, I want to ask questions and go like, well, when was the last time you did feel understood? And when was the last time you did feel seen? And is is there a way I can word this that would maybe make it feel kinder? I want to communicate with you in a way that feels kind and comfortable. Instead, my brain was like, how the fuck does he not know what right. I'm saying? Yeah, by that, the way, that's this what it was, was, the intention. This was the intention, right? So this was before <laughs> I knew that you were on the spectrum, though I had a sneaking suspicion. Why was it sneaking? <laughs> it snuck up on me when I would talk to you and you'd go... It just snuck up. Right. This is. Uh, I do want to, to, to tap into that. That real quick was was I used to do that. I guess I used to do that. But with I'll do, you, I'll do it. To, I'll do it. To, I'll do it to the camera. So I would talk to to Ricky, and I would be telling him something like about my family or something that was either intense or maybe just even a joke. Maybe just telling him a fucking joke, and he would. And then I would look at him, and during the whole thing, he would be doing varying degrees of this. <laughs> Wait, I have to do make the eyes deader. Hold on. I can't because make me laugh. That is what he would do. And then I would say to him, Hey, do you know that when I'm when I was just telling you that? Oh, is thing, that how you said it to me? Yeah. I would go like you, you said, Are you listening to me? Yeah. Well, I would go like, Are you even listening? Do you know? But no, I remember, I consciously remember saying, because I spoke to my fucking therapist about it, and the term I used was that I was raising your consciousness. Okay. I said And you were. And I said well, I think I probably was that's upset I, about it at that, first because I was like, I'm, when you're talking to someone you're in a relationship with and they're going... That's what I learned that I have to, when people are talking, I have to go like this. Oh. <laughs> that was the day oh. I learned to pretend to give a fuck about what someone oh. was saying. Good job. I still, since then, and it's been five years, I've learned, I still feel silly, but I do it. I still, it's, it, it's, it, I, when someone says something, I still go, mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I feel so silly doing it though. But then you realize that's literally what every single other person in conversation does. So like whether we like it or not, there are social norms. I have this 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 consciousness that 
everybody knows my intention. That's actually the problem. Right. I'm, I'm realizing this now, I think. That's the problem. I assumed everyone knows my intention, so it was no issue. No, they don't at but all. But with that, I assume that they know, oh, I'm just... I've ta- I talk about this on stage now, but when I get the car door for a girl and I'm coming from the driver's side, when I have to go around, they know that I'm just doing this because I'm supposed to do this. And I know they know that. So now I know they know that I'm just manipulating them into thinking I'm a good guy. They, right. She, so she's just going to think, oh, I'm just trying to fuck her. When the truth is, if she begged me to fuck her, I, I would need another week. <laughs> but I, so now I have to, what do I do? Do I, do I get the door and, and worry now that she thinks that I'm trying to fuck her, which she has no idea the hoops she'd have to jump through? Or do I say, I'm not sure. Am I supposed to get the door for you? And now I'm stopping her from wanting to fuck me because I'm just too Jewish. So anyway. Did you do that whole bit on stage just like that? I don't do it like that at all. I just talk about the car door. I like the whole thing. Yeah? Yeah, I like the part. Did you do the part about um, the hoop she'd have to jump through? To, oh, no, I've never it's said great. that. You should listen to it again. It's great. All right. <sighs> You better edit out all the times I go, will you remind me what we were just saying? Because then before that, I wanted, wanted to... It's going to be tough because I respond to you what we were. Or if, if the, and it makes sense. But I really you know, I really man? appreciate my fans and I like to, have to see them raw and authentic with no edits. Also, I think it's cool that it's kind of our dynamic of mm-hmm. showing that like, you know, what was I saying? Oh, you were saying this. I'm fine with that. You could keep it in. I just... Um, my grandma is coming on the podcast this uh-huh. week. She... Wh- yeah. I may have to come see Grandma Gloria Glassman. Come Who else is coming? She's not flying herself these days. Oh, the pilot's taking her. Isn't she in her late 70s? She's in her late 80s. She's 88, I think. Oh, of course. Of course she is. Of course she is. My parents are in their early 70s. Yeah. Grandma no, Gloria she, Glassman? But she's not flying by herself at that Yeah, she's not flying by herself. And you know, last time she flew here, she got a she's real a kick out of... She's a uh, She... she um, Hashtag Gra- Grandma Gloria Glassman. Follow her on Twitter at Grandma Glassman. She got on the plane over here and was recognized from when she did the Rich Eisen Stop show. Stop it. And are you, are you Grandma Gloria Glassman? And they took a picture with her. And she took, when she got here, she's like, I was get people, 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 by the way. Once I got the information, it was a woman. But people were taking pictures with me. <laughs> Do you know that my dad, um, when I post him on my story doing saying like showing me his sunglasses that mm-hmm. he got at the beach now these are my boardwalks these are the ones i got at the boardwalk and he calls them his my mom was like alan where are your boardwalks uh-huh. these are my boardwalks and then the pumpkin that talks in the front yard just scares the shit out of these fucking pumpkins i was telling him the other day that we got to make more content right. because people like uh-huh. when he's on there and then when i was home he was saying to one of his friends i overheard him go and now i got all these followers <laughs> <laughs> I <laughs> know he goes, and now I got all now I uh, well I got all these followers. They want to hear what I'm doing. Like no, Dad. I mean they do, but they're not your followers. Just to be VV clear. So my grandma is coming, and uh, I'm not sure if we're doing Friday or Saturday. It was originally Friday. Now I'm thinking I want to do Saturday for reasons I don't need to explain. So my grandma just always she just whenever you leave, it's a, be careful. It's just everything is be careful. And uh, I texted her. Um, that, you know, how about we do it Saturday? Mm -hmm. And she said, what time? Not too late. I said, afternoon. And she wrote back, okay, love you. Be careful. I like any time from 1.30 to about whatever. I don't care what time. But she said, be Be careful. In the middle of it. She always says, even when I'm at home and she knows, like for the night, she'll always message. She sends me just pictures. Since she learned Instagram, she's just constantly sending me pictures of, um, of this cat that she likes. Stop it. And then she'll sometimes she'll send me four pictures of the cat and then there'll be a one that says, be careful. Stop. And then there'll be another picture of a cat. No, it isn't. <laughs> she doesn't do that. Uh-huh. Okay. How's this going? Great. I'm having a great time. Are we done? Maybe. <laughs> How long did we talk? An hour 20? Yeah, but if but by the time I edit this, it'll be three hours. Sure. I'm going to, you know, I'm putting in repeats. <laughs> uh-huh. Lots of like, wicka, wicka. I, I, it took me. It takes me forty hours to edit some of these. No joke. A full week where I do five hour days. That's crazy for a whole week. But that's because of the YouTube, not because of the audio, right? If this were audio, I would just upload st- it'd it. Be done. Cut a couple things and upload it. Yeah, yeah. Maybe. I don't even really care. But the video, I spend so much time on. I know, but they're so good. I've only seen a couple, but they're so good. And when people find them. I think you're going to be psyched that you, Thanks. that it's like, because I think it's not even going to be that much of like a, a spike in it getting better because they'll already be good. It's not like, from oh, number shit, one, got- from number one, I've been doing podcasts for five years. As you remember, um, when I ran into you once when I was with Lamorne and I think Ron at the Starbucks, Oof. but which we could talk about, but I never posted them. 
So I've been doing them for a while, and now it's like, yeah, I got them. Watch this. Check these out. Please. You know? Um, <laughs> what? I don't... I remember you doing the one with Lamorne and Ron, but what was that called? And I just... I did... Oh. A, I did so many different podcasts with so many different themes, no themes. That's where I got my idea for this podcast. Um, the first th one. That I did with D John DeWalt, which was... One. It was called The First Episode, where the idea was... We've been doing podcasts since the, the mid-90s, and we've, we kept coming up with new themes and new ideas, so we just have this archive of hundreds and hundreds of different first episodes, the McDonald's boys, Universal Studios dudes, all these different mm -hmm. things. But ultimately, it was just too much. It was an improv scene, and it was just like, I can't. This isn't sustainable. You know? I did like it, but yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think this is great. I do, too. We'll have you back. Having me back feels like a weird... Well, of course, I'll come back. I would do everything you do, but we'll have you back feels like... It feels like a way to get rid of someone, even though I know that's not what you you're doing. You read it correct. Oh. <laughs> even though I know that's what you're not doing. It yeah, like, we'll have, definitely have you back. This is like great. Like when Howard Jackie Stern Tone. goes, you, look, you've said it all. And it's like, nah, I've, I've said about 40 minutes worth of stuff, but that's like a, it's a good wrap up. Yeah. To tell the person, con congratulate uh. them, thank them, come in in positive. We can't wait. We'll have you back. It's also just like, you know, get your shoes back on. Right, right. Well, it was really nice meeting you. Your name was putting Ron Gladish. I have this, this, this thesis, this belief that we are saving, we are reserving a nice to meet you for the first time you meet somebody, and I don't, I, I don't think it needs to be then. Well, it is because the other option is nice to see you. The thing is, at this point, I think your brain wants to do this, but it's like. You don't. I don't. I hate this fucking term, but don't reinvent the wheel. You want to. These already exist. Jackie, I'm just doing a joke where I say nice to meet you even though I've already met you. I'm Feels like something that you would genuinely want to do. I understand. This is why I'm, I'm making sure that we're, the intention is understood. Wish you went with it. I'm sorry, what were you saying? No, nothing. About it's nice not, to meet you? Nothing. It's not, it's not important anymore. You look more aggravated when you're aggravated with a mustache. <laughs> That's right. Which is where I think where the saying comes from. We will get a shirt that says that. You look more, more ag aggravated when you're aggravated with a mustache. Everyone looks more aggravated while wearing a mustache. I like saying aggravated twice because it's already such a fucking absurd statement. Everybody looks more aggravated when they're aggravated with a mustache. Can we get rid of the there and do everybody looks more aggravated when aggravated with a mustache? 100%. It sounds like it's got rid of them. Everyone's more aggravated when aggravated with a mustache. Yes. Everyone's more aggravated when aggravated with a mustache. Everyone's more aggravated with aggravated with a mustache. Yeah. Yeah. If I've told you once, I've told you a thousand times is another good mustache one. If I've told you once, I've told you a thousand times. I just said once. If I told you <laughs> once, I told you a thousand times. If, if I've had lunch, I've told you a thousand times. If I've had lunch, I've told you a thousand times. Speaking of lunch, I'd like you to tell uh, the, uh, uh, the audience in on something that I think is very uh, charming and hilarious about your father and your observation of him, of uh, how he tips at a restaurant. Oh, God. He, well, my dad, um, he does like a lot of really kind things, but sometimes you wonder if the kind thing is, it's a combo because it is a good thing and he's a nice man and a good man, but then you wonder like, all right, well, that doesn't feel like that was for that person. That 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 performance felt like it was maybe a little bit more for you. Like when he tips someone, he, like he doesn't just leave it on the table. He flares the cash in mm -hmm. like a f miniature fan and hands it directly to the waiter. Look at all of these but, bills. Mm -hmm, but makes it like it's low key. He flares the tip. So he like hands it and he goes, thank you so much. You were great. The <laughs> fucking godfather. Or it's like, leave it on the table like everybody else. And if it's a big tip and it's nice, then that's for that person. This isn't for them. But I see that in myself. I don't do that. But that thing of like needing to be liked to a point of like letting a waiter know that you really... I really took care of him. Something happened last night at the improv where they gave a guy got a, a guy gave me his, a drink and then that was the end of it. And I rewind. A guy gave you a drink. A bar. The, I, I got a, a drink from the bar. Okay. When you said a guy gave me a drink, I thought you meant a gentleman bought you a drink, which I was fine with, but I wanted of to understand. Of course, that question existed. I sure. Of course, it makes total sense. Fair. Bartender. Bartender. Try not to say bartender too much. Bartender. So. I got the drink and great, everything's good. And then I want to give him three bucks, but I, uh, I, I wasn't even conscious of this. I just tapped, tapped him on the shoulder. He was right next to me. I tapped, it's dark. You don't want to say anything. It's, you know, there's a show going. I tap sure. him on the shoulder. He looks, I, I show him the three bucks and I, and I put it on the bar. Oi. And then he goes, and I went like that. Didn't think anything of it. Uh, and then I got home. I was thinking like, oh. Did I, I just flare the tip? Did I, and then 
I, I, I had a conversation with myself, and I here's, drove back. here's what I could. I went back. I went back. I said, listen to me, Pete. I apologize. That was cheesy. I should have just given you the tip and not made it about my performance of how good a person I am to have been giving you such a large tip. Love the bit. The exact opposite, though. <laughs> what I said was, well, Rick, why did you want, why, what, you wanted him to know that you gave him the three bucks? And you know what I, my answer was? Yeah. Yeah. And then you know what I thought? Yeah. So? And then I was like, oh, that's fine. And if he had a problem with that, it's on him. He would never have a problem Probably with it. Probably not. It's my mom who has a problem with it. And I understand where it's like, well, just leave it on the table. And like if we go to an ice cream shop, like when I'm back east over the summer, we'll go to like these little pop-up ice cream shops. And he waits, like the person goes and gets the ice cream and he could, he's already paid. He could drop the tip in the right. jar like every fucking other person on the planet. They come back. That's when he tips. Then he's like looking at them. Thank you so much. And it's this deliberate like. <laughs> yeah, they look at this. <laughs> That's why it's all on intention. Your and thing feels a, like a, a it lot was of more because it was loud. Yeah, so I, you could I, I have want, just left it on the bar. Yeah, right. and and sometimes, sometimes I I would do that. Sometimes it's like they, they they go, you do whatever, you leave it, whatever. Who gives a shit? For whatever reason, there I wanted him to know that because you know you, I get free you get free drinks because you're performing. I want him to know that like I, I'm not taking. I don't mean to take. Like I want. Thank you. I, yeah. I'm not taking. I wanted you to know that I'm not just taking the drink, and that's okay to want him to know that. I think that's nice. Yeah. I think it's a. I do. I do. So I, there, there's a distinction, especially because when we do shows, they give us free drinks, and I think a lot of comics don't tip. Because they're like, I'm doing a show here, but like that person is still working. Yeah, the bartender didn't book you. A hundred percent. And he's fucking back there standing all night. Give him yeah. a couple bucks. Plus, he's that back there, at least for me. I don't know if you could relate to this. And every time, just how much they come over and like, I 100%. love watching you perform. Aww. I'm not even joking. I mean, my intention of bringing this up was a cocky thing, but also, this is the truth. It's crazy how the much more, bartenders like little my sets. Note, little note to the bartenders of the comedy clubs, the more you compliment Ricky, the more tipped you're going to get. I, I'm going to give two or three dollars a okay, drink. Okay, it's going to be, a, there's a cap. Um, no, I usually, I usually. Um, quick revoke. Uh, yeah. There's a cap. It's two or three. No, the cap is five. No. You're going to tip somebody five dollars for one drink? When I am paid 15, I give the five. I'll take the 10, you take the five. You make 15 on a show and give whatever that percentage is. I'm not giving 33% percent on okay. every show I do, but if I'm getting 15 bucks... But if I, I'm getting a lot of compliments, I might. It has nothing to do with the compliments. Mm. Because the but, reality but is it, only, it happens 4% of the time I get the compliment. But also it's... Which it, isn't a bad it percentage. Only, it's terrible, 4%, but it only... For them to it, come up to me and say how much I love watching what oh, you I do. Oh, I thought you meant when you go up to the bar to get a drink, they say nothing to you. I'm like, that's kind of terrible. No, no, <laughs> no, no. I'm saying 4% of the time, they go out of their way to come fair, up to me and fair, be fair, like, fair. dude, you're, what you do is so special and, um, and it, amazing and, and smart is, and, and amazing and you're the best. And that's what Dax thinks too. And they, it's like, thank you. The, 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 the max is five bucks though. <laughs> there is a cap. Yes. There is a roof. When I'm getting paid 15. Got it. If I get paid 20 and I get a $20 bill, chances are I'll just give them singles. Sure. Because I, I don't You're need, need to break change. a five. Okay. I don't need to break. I will never break a five, but I will break a 10 or a 20. Okay. So if I give you... Are those alive? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know if they were plastic. No, they're real, and they could hear everything. Hey, girls, looking good. Thanks so much. What's my? <laughs> they have my voice. <laughs> oh my god. Hey, is that girls. How, is that how you hear yourself? No, a little bit. Oh. No, but like when I, like <laughs> it, it, it took me. It wasn't until well into my thirties I was like similar re re thing of you of um, the realization you came to where I was like what. I'm annoying? How did that get by me for so long? I just thought this was like a charming shtick everybody was in on. Yeah. It's grading to some people? That is fascinating. I got a lot of spit in my mouth. Um, I'm sorry. I was just a little confused by that statement. You said well into your 30s. <laughs> you look like her daughter. What are you guys? Were you guys? Were you guys sisters? Yeah. Whenever you meet a, if you know, here's a little hot take uh, for, for you guys out there. If you ever. You're really a millennial. You've said hot take a couple times today. Thank WTF. you. WTF. Thank you. With or without Mark Maron? With. So I, I, when, when you meet a girl uh, and her mom, or when you meet a girl's mom, it's important to shake her hand and look confused. And you could slow play it for up to five seconds. You want her to say, what's the matter? If she doesn't, don't lean into it and then mm -hmm. just bring it up. But best case scenario, she says, what's the matter? And you say, I'm just confused. Are you her mom or are you guys sisters? Oh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. then make sure when you say that, you put your head back and you look, you squint and you look real confused. Sisters. And then if it looks like it's going well, you you could tag it with putting your hands up like this and you go, what is happening here? This is a great idea. What is happening here? 
And you then, can put that little bit up as like just an Instagram clip as like a... Sure. Yeah, for people to, so they can understand. Maybe I'll do it tighter so it could be within 15 seconds. Or is it, is it good? No, it's good. And I don't even mean for story. I mean like put that on your static feed so, because you're giving a tutorial that a lot of people need to know. Yeah, I'm thinking about writing a book um, that's called... Uh, how all to the, Meet Girls Moms? No, mm. uh, but that could be a, a chapter. Or what to do when meeting. I don't know right. how to meet one, but when I do... True, true, fair. I prefer Dos Equis. Mm -hmm. About uh, a, the, unwritten, the unwritten rules written. Mm. You know, that's actually a really good idea for you. Yeah, because people don't say the things. And here's here's going to be. But also in the work you're doing on yourself and realizing these things, I feel when every when we talk, you're blowing my mind constantly in the things you're learning as a each person. other sentences. Gab up as a person who's learning all these things later in life. I'm constantly going like, oh fuck, what a great thing to have pointed out to me that like maybe I low-key new but no one ever said out loud to me it's fascinating to have these conversations as a grown-up i went from the apprentice to um a different reality show uh -huh. the biggest loser <laughs> assistant counselor <laughs> yeah, yeah a lot of options but the, really truly my brain's still spinning on him but the 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 like the easiest one to digest for that is Love one that Island. i brought up earlier thank mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. yes i couldn't remember the name mm -hmm. which is uh here's a simple rule that is literally how to execute when someone says how you doing you say good and you and then how, that that shaves off 25 seconds every time it happens mm -hmm. similarly which is not too surprising because i feel that there might be part of like things that you would do that would be really big that I would react to in a negative way because I would just like see myself in them and be like, oh, mm. I don't know if I love right. it when I do that. And now I've chosen a person who does that because I do love that behavior and respond to it. And there is this carefree thing about it. But also, anyway, that wasn't what I was going to say. What I was going to say was, oh, I've started saying medium and I have to stop. And I'm actively trying to stop saying medium when someone me asks context? how I am. Yeah. Because a couple things. One, nobody wants to fucking know you're doing medium when you're going into like do a quick voiceover and you're the person who like has the gig and is running the thing. That's it's why like, you don't ask. Uh, please continue. But that's why you don't ask right, how you're doing. Right. But, yes, but, yes, yes. but people do. And oftentimes, and I struggle with, um, at the moment, it's, it's pretty under control, which is a, a huge relief to me because it seems to ebb and flow at times in my life that I can't really understand. And what I'm referring to is anxiety and depression where it's not like when I'm successful, it goes away. And when I'm broke, it's there. It's like it, 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 I haven't been able to figure out the algorithm. So when I'm in a position of things going what t seems well, actually it doesn't seem well, is objectively a person doing well, that doesn't mean like my emotional state is, is, is hot shit. And it was starting to annoy me. And this is probably starting to feel like privileged and shitty. But it was like a, when people would ask, how are you? I know that it's just a nice question. And someone's just sort of checking in with you as a human. And it's a social construct and it exists. But I just started saying medium because I didn't feel like going good, good, really good. When I was like really sad about something or whatever it was. Yeah. And I guess it's like you know what, what principle am I standing on? I'm actually coming to this conclusion right now by like, that's another example of like, do you need to be that authentic and true to yourself in that moment? No. Tell the person at the voiceover session who's just throwing a pleasantry in your direction that their mom and teacher and friends and society has taught them, just fucking say good and move on. Yeah. But I was having a moment of like, well, I don't really feel right that good. And it felt disingenuous to go like, really good, you... And I would just, and also there was part of how disarming it was, like medium, and I would always get a laugh because people were like, did you just say medium? And I'm and what's like, what's the problem with yeah. it? Yeah, and then people would be like, I love that. Then what's the problem with it? I think it's similar. It just maybe struck a chord when you were like, just say good in you and move on. And the amount of time you're saving, and if you don't want, and if the, if the end result is to not have a conversation with the person, because it's just, not because you, you don't want to, but it's just in passing and you're on your way somewhere, then the quicker, easier, socially acceptable route, I never say route, route, is to just do that. But, but I think that, we both that, have problems with that. I think that, that, that it's, it's, you know, once you know a rule, you could then deconstruct it. But that's the good in you is the default. It isn't, it isn't a hard right. rule. It's a default. So when you're in this thing and, and it doesn't matter, if you could just say, just remember, good in you, good in you. But if it doesn't feel authentic, you could literally say whatever you want. I mean, I, I say this a lot of times, which I'm trying to do more good in you, the same thing is when tell your mom I say hi, which is how you doing. I go, I don't do that. 
you know <laughs> I, I don't I don't do that but and, and, it's, and sometimes that's really funny and charming and sometimes it's like living your life with Larry David where it's like that's funny on television but interpersonally if you tell someone I'm not doing that that's but I, such a shutdown of that person that ab- makes them so uncomfortable absolutely and that's why it's important to accept yourself and I'm not here it is I'm admitting this again and I used to be embarrassed about this I'm not perfect and sometimes you're going to be a little uncomfortable at the expense of me not being very uncomfortable and just, you also That's know... That's interesting, though, and then it's boundaries and you knowing what you And you won't need. ask me anymore. Right. And if you do, it's an easier way to digest when I said, I told you I don't do this, you know? But the I told you I don't do this with a cute face and hands for me, and this is all coming from me being codependent and not being, physically not being able to create a boundary, but, like, I, I would be so... For as... For, to, for me to have the personality I have and also simultaneously be as uncomfortable as I am making someone uncomfortable is like dichotomous and fighting itself all the time where you are just like, I'm fucking doing it. And I love that about you, but also I see why it gets you in trouble when it does. People aren't as uncomfortable as you think they are. And that's, that's where that big shift. When I realized people were, that was where that depression was. And then I realized, Oh, everyone is projecting everything. Of course, what are they, going home and thinking about how much you ruin their day? No, they're on their own shit. But it's not even about affecting their lives, even in that moment. Right. In that moment, we were talking about this, uh, I was talking about this in the episode with Dax when he was talking about- Oh, Dax did the show? Just kidding. I know, he's so excited. When he goes on an elevator and people don't know who he is, he feels like, okay, I have to to earn this. He said, I'm back to earning it. Uh Uh-huh. And- and, you know, because there's that uncomfortable moment, people are uncomfortable. And I said, if they are uncomfortable, they're uncomfortable because they're assuming that you're uncomfortable, which is exactly what you're doing on them. You can't put that on them. And it literally, cre- that's what is creating the uncomfort is by definition creating it, right? Right. I can't control how I feel. I'm going to control how you feel. So good. With that acceptance of knowing if they're uncomfortable, that's on them. And I'll, listen, you want my help? I'd love to. Let me do a fart joke. I'll kill it. That being said, I don't feel any obligation to make them feel comfortable. And with that... I do. That's where I think the, the ex- I wish I didn't. Acceptance. I'm not proud of it. I'm not walking around being like, hooray, I have my, my happiness is dependent upon the happiness of the people that I'm in an elevator with. But you know it's that. It's one thing if it, my happiness is dependent am- upon a person I'm very close to. Sure, I don't want to make you upset ever. But if I'm in it, like... T- when I, on the first day of training for Glow Season 1, we walk into the ring and we're all about to wrestle for the first time any of us have ever wrestled. And it's a bunch of actresses, some dancers, some singers, just looking at each other like with a fa- very famous wrestling legend being like, I'm going like, I'm not comfortable somersaulting. And that is mm-hmm. true. And instead of just learning and buckling up and believing in myself, I go... Well, if anybody's nervous about looking like a total fucking idiot, um, you can just look in my direction because I promise I'm worse at this than you. Which some people, my comic friends, are like, Ama- that's amazing. You took one for the team. You made everybody feel comfortable. Now I'm getting te- a little teary. But it's like I had to go out of my way to shit on myself mm. to be immediately liked, to get everybody else to be comfortable, and on the one hand, it is it is nice, like it, it, that. It, that is a kind of okay thing to do. But when I look at it in the, oh, across the spectrum of my life and the choices I make, I get a little sad for like little kid Jackie, who's just like saying that because I'm insecure that I've never considered myself athletic in any way, and not wanting to fail, and being afraid to fail. And so I, I comboed my fear of failing in my codependence and made myself look like a fucking idiot and made everybody else feel comfortable at the expense of myself. I think you need to give yourself a break. <laughs> yeah, that's another statement. Because first of all, you may, if, if, if what you did made everybody else feel comfortable... That doesn't make you look like an idiot. That's just not. I don't mean make. I don't mean make myself look like an idiot. I just mean what I was doing. Who cares? Was That's being, what you do. Yeah. And you were an insecure kid, as everybody was, and the tools you developed because of that are what made you be able to be on this show with these people. True. It's why you're funny. You want to keep the good, the, the good of the instincts, but get rid of the bad. But they're all inclusive. Mm-hmm. You're gonna do this thing. And, oh, it's self-deprecating. I had to do that to do this. It's like, yeah, you're great at that thing. Who gives a shit? 
Yeah, and I and I appreciate that. I do. And that's that's that is ultimately like how I feel in my core, but I do think if if I had to do it again, I don't know that I would change it. That exact experience, but I don't think I would do that thing again. Like Then you won't. Right. Like I went like, "You know what? I'm I'd rather step into something like before when you were 90% serious and 10% joking being like uh, actually 100% serious about being like, oh no, because I know how fucking funny I am mm -hmm. and I know that I'm amazing. Mm -hmm. So like when you were in step two of coming out of the depression and being like, wait a second, <laughs> I'm unreal. Um, That's step three. Step three. I think, and this is something I wanted to bring up when you were saying that, this isn't, that's not something we're allowed to say. And when you say that, my heart grows. You're not allowed to say what? I think socially, like, no, people don't walk around being allowed to say things like, I love my, it's true, but that's why it's so you don't, you fucking don't need great a, when you say it. You don't it. need to solicit it to people, but you are allowed to it accept up, it with self. And when you're in a conversation course, and then it's organic, who cares? Which is why I l couldn't love more. My head's going to pop off like a fucking Barbie. I couldn't love more that you said it, but I don't know that I hear anyone else I know saying shit like that. And I sometimes feel it for myself and then squash it because I don't want to say that I feel really... You don't want to, it's funny that you say that you don't want to say that because you're worried about how people mm -hmm. are going to receive it. And that's the antithesis of what this is because they're going to receive it how they receive it no matter how you worry about it. And no matter what you say, if you say you're shitty, they're going to be like, oh, that's annoying. She's saying she's, sit she's shitty and also, she's Also, you don't need to tell them anything. It. Right. I'm just saying, I think it's cool that you Thank said you. that and I want to try and stand in that power more yeah. instead of being a person that gets in the ring and is funny and breaks the ice and makes everyone comfortable. I want to do that too, but I could just be like, yo, I'm, I'm here for you if you bite it or if I bite right. it, make sure to pick me up, whatever it is, but also stand in my power because I'll tell you something, they didn't give me a lot of fucking moves season one because I fucking told them first that I couldn't mm -hmm. and now it's going to really make me cry because... I stepped into a situation and I was like, hear ye, hear ye, I can't. And they went, oh, okay, well, the other girls yeah. will do the wrestling. Then I came back in for season two with a vengeance and I'm body slamming bitches in training and they're like, oh, what happened to you? Yeah. And I was like, oh, I went through a breakup. Um, but it is that thing of like, I think that's what it is more than anything. And I think I found it at the bottom of it all is like, I'm coming in. I'm so afraid to fail that I'm coming in Letting you know I can't before you even tell yeah, me I can't. Yeah, that's a big one. Being afraid to fail. Will Smith talks about it all the time. He says, oh, fail, fail forward. Yep. And when you're uh, being afraid of failure is so counterintuitive because it's inevitable. <laughs> of be course. A, be a, it's so corny, but be afraid of, of lack of growth. Yeah. You know? And when you fail, is, that's, that's when the questions come. Yeah. And uh, I just think, I, I, yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't able to... Put my finger on why that bothered me so much that I which part th th that why why when I said that it bothered me and when I tell people when, I'm they sorry get, why when you said sorry why? when I said that I that if anybody thinks they're gonna look gotcha. stupid I promise I'll be worse like why that really bothered me so much and I think I I, fin I finally found it because I didn't that I that I was beating you to the punch it's like being a comic when you wear glasses this is the dumbest most full house ass joke. That's off, loser. It's the most full house. Just full outside. Great. It's the most full house ass joke. Where commit, commit, commit. Is is, is this thing bothering you? Yes. Is, okay, makes sense. I did it for the for the edit. Hundred percent. But I love it. I knew. I loved it. Um, it's that full house ass joke where like you wear you get new glasses and you're afraid your elementary school friends are gonna make fun of you. So yeah. you're like, Mom, I'm four eyes. Yuck, yuck. What am I a library? And you make all the jokes before. That's literally an episode of Full House. Yeah. Where you make the jokes before someone else can and. It's a defense mechanism, and I... And it's a beautiful thing. I, I couldn't agree more, and I think that I would like to combo that yeah. with standing in my power and also being able to be like, I did that. Well, I know I'm that... strong. I know that you do do that. I'm capable. I know that you have that in you. Uh, I've heard, literally heard you tell me, and I couldn't have agreed with you more. But confidence is fluid, <laughs> and to, to assume that... To be upset when you don't have it is... is it's. Tough shit. I think it's not like when I don't have it. It's like it comes and goes, of course. But this was like this giant statement I made on day one. Right. And they followed. I mean, they pushed me for sure. Our trainers are unbelievable. And I did cr crazy shit in season one. I never thought I'd be able to do. But then in season two, I did real shit. Mm -hmm. um, because I was able to get out of my own way. And also they saw me. They were like, would you go to wrestling camp over the summer? And I was like, mm, no got my heart broken and
just came back and because season one I was afraid I was like I don't want to do anything we do our own stunts I was like I don't want to get hurt and never mm-hmm. be able to act again and you know have my Gilda Radner on Broadway moment in my early 40s like just let me fucking do glow and then be, let me do my Broadway show I don't want to get hurt and I of course still didn't want to get hurt and they take such good care of us but I had just like a a real moment of like when am I ever going to be trained to wrestle again? Mm -hmm. Teach me every single thing that A, you can, and B, I'm capable of doing, which turned out to be like schoolboys and crucifixes and body slams and suplexes and shit, and it's berserk, and I can do them, and I like want to do them right now because they're fun and I know how. Can we just cut to a clip and said, I don't want to do them? No, I don't want to, and you're way bigger than me. I would die. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, I'd like to end this, end this with one thought uh, uh, from the beginning of feeling uncomfortable. And I think that uh, uncomfortable has bad PR. <laughs> and that being uncomfortable isn't, if you weren't, af- if one wasn't afraid of it or didn't try to avoid it, how much, how much easier things would be. Mm. And you don't necessarily have to seek it. it, like I sometimes do for a bit. Sure. But... Who, yeah. Who cares? But yeah, I don't mean that in diminishing people's perspective on it. I'm just offering an additional one. Why do you care? Mm -hmm. Like, why is it uncomfortable? I don't like what is like. Literally, I'm asking. What is? Do you not like the feeling you have in your stomach, the one that you get on a roller coaster that you wait in line to do? Do you not like it because you're unsure of something, which is the reason you don't want spoilers for a movie? You don't feel safe. You don't have expectate. What's the problem Mm -hmm. with it? If you don't feel safe, I understand. And some uncomfort is t- tapping in that thing where you f- you fear for something. But when it's a, a social thing where you know worst case scenario is still low stakes, what if they yeah. think that... Who cares? Yeah, and once... I hear you. Personally, becoming comfortable in that uncomfort... Discomfort. Be- thank you. Then you get to you get to literally live in it and not be distracted by it. That's and then a it's really just an- good point. Thanks. Kristen tweeted something the other day, was a retweet of somebody, but it was like... Um, Somebody named Tank Sinatra, George Resch said, you can care about things without being upset all the time. I think people might not know this. And I literally, I, it was so funny. I was jaw dropped when I read this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Never. I was like, but I fucking care about that. So of course I'm upset. And it's like, or back to this visual I have of like a woman in the cool Joan of Arc gear, sort of armor, but not, Armor, like maybe today's like, armor, maybe leather flaps yeah. coming down in like triangle shapes, just standing with like a sword in the ground. And when I have a decision to make, I don't need to freak out, just stand in my power, call the person that I have either the issue with or the concern or the point I'd like to make, and just make it and be calm and kind and clear and just make it. Not, and I feel like, I feel like. I'm coming from this like frenetic place sometimes that I really, really don't want to be coming from. And that made me go like, oh, <laughs> well, yeah, I guess I don't, I don't need to be so bad out of shape, huh? I should just care about the thing and not be freaking the fuck out. Anyway. You could care about things without freaking the fuck out. My name is Rick Glassman. And I'm Jackie Tone. Thank you for stopping in on Take Your Shoes Off. Thank you for making me take my shoes off. I love you. This was great. And we'll see you next Monday. Scoot Doo, Blubbity Blue. Scoot Doo, Blubbity Blue.